When studying the convergence of an infinite series or divergence of an infinite series, one of the first term, uh, one of the first tests that you typically learn is the nth term test. Now, the nth term test uh, will not necessarily tell you when a series converges, but um, it will tell you when it doesn't converge. So it, it can be a very helpful test. So here's what it says: it says that if you know that your series converges, then it promises you that the limit as n approaches infinity of those terms is going to be zero. In plain English, that means that the terms have to get smaller if the series is going to converge. So if you can show for a given series that the terms aren't going to zero, maybe they're alternating or maybe they're growing, then you can definitively say that the series can't converge. There's no way because the terms don't go to zero. So here's a simple example. Let's say we had the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of n squared. So when you start adding these successive terms, you plug in a 1, you have 1 squared uh, plus 2 squared plus 3 squared. It's pretty clear just after a couple of terms, uh, if you do this for forever, this is not going to add to a finite number. This is going to continue to grow and grow and grow, and it'll be infinity. So in this case, it's pretty clear that um, that if the terms are not going to zero, then there's there's no way it can converge. Now, uh, some people would say, well, Devin, what if it um, alternated? Maybe this is a classic problem where the terms alternate between plus or minus one. Um, let's say you had negative one to the n, the sum of negative one to the n. Then you'd have uh, negative one plus one minus one plus one minus one plus one uh, forever. And so somebody might say, well, well, Devin, hang on. Um, for these, if you group them like so, you get zero and then negative one and one, that makes zero, and negative one and one, that makes zero. So, uh, so, this, so this converges, right? So this series would quote unquote converge, um, but the terms don't go to zero, they just oscillate back and forth. Well, uh, the problem with this one, this is kind of subtle, but the problem with this problem is that your sum of zero depended on how you grouped uh, these terms here. For instance, if I were to say, well, let's, let's go back and let me try to group them. Let me group them a little differently. Then I, I can group negative one by itself if I wanted to. And then I could group one minus one, and then one minus one, and then one minus one forever. And so is the infinite series equal to one? or negative one or zero, uh, which is it? You, know, you can see there's no clear cut answer. Um, and that, that kind of in some sense goes to show that, that that series there is not gonna converge. It's not a concrete finite number that we know what it is. And in fact, if you played around with the parentheses a little bit, you could actually make the sum look like whatever you wanted it to look like. But obviously it's one series. It can't have multiple different answers. So, um, so even that issue of alternating uh, doesn't work. If a series converges, then the terms d definitively have to go to zero. And uh, looking at this first example, it's pretty clear, I think, why that's the case. Uh, if this is going to add up to a finite number, then you have to have the later terms become negligible so that they don't affect you know, what, what that sum is. Now, one thing I need to be very clear about before we try some more examples is the reverse statement is not necessarily true. This is usually, usually where students get in trouble. If you find a series whose um, terms do in fact go to zero, that does not automatically mean that the series converges. Um, it's a uh, it's a minimal requirement. The terms at least have to go to zero, but they might even have more restrictions other than that. Uh, let, let me give you an example. Uh, let's say we had the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n. Well, clearly those terms are getting smaller. You have 1 over 1 plus 1 over 2 plus a third plus a fourth plus a fifth. Clearly the limit of the terms are going to zero. But it turns out this diverges. This diverges. So having the terms go to zero does not imply that the series converge. So how are you supposed to use this test? Well, somebody hands you a infinite series and asks you, does this does this series converge? And you don't you don't think that it does. All you have to do is show that the limit 
as n goes to infinity of those terms, if you can show that that um, equals some number other than L or even doesn't exist, even maybe there's not a limit, as long as it's not zero, then you're done. You can say there's no way that it can converge. It's impossible, um, even if the terms are oscillating. Now, let's say you take a limit of a series you're not really sure about, and let's say, let's say you do get zero. Well, then what that means is that you've just got a little bit more work to do. Now you need to move on to the ratio test or the P-series test or the limit comparison test or one of your other tests to uh, finish it off and really show that it converges. Um, let's do a couple examples real quick. All right, the first one, let's see, you have the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of um, n squared plus 3n minus 1. Um, over um, 2n squared plus 5n plus 1, something like that. Well, it's kind of a complicated series depending on what your rational function looks like. Sometimes these will converge, sometimes they'll diverge. We don't really know. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take a, take a shot in the dark. We'll take the limit as n goes to infinity of n squared plus 3n minus 1 over 2n squared plus 5n plus 1. And um, you can evaluate this limit different ways depending on what courses you've had and what sections you've covered. Uh, a Calc 1 student would probably do this either with a, a table of some kind or something. But um, hopefully if you're in Calc 2, you may have already seen what's called L'Hopital's Rule. L'Hopital's Rule is fantastic in this situation. If you don't know what that is, look it up um, or, or catch my video on it. But um, L'Hopital, we usually abbreviate with an LH. And this limit here, if I can spell limit as n goes to infinity, uh, you'll notice if you see where these individual terms go as n goes to infinity, you get infinity over infinity. L'Hopital's rule says you can differentiate, not quotient rule, but just differentiate the numerator and denominator separately and redo the limit. That's a fantastic rule. Now unfortunately you still get infinity over infinity so we use L'Hopital's rule one more time and we get a half. Okay. Now that doesn't mean that the series adds up to a half. That's a common mistake. We were taking the limit of the terms just to see where the terms are going and the limit was a half. So what that means is a thousand terms down the line you're roughly going to be getting a half plus a half plus a half plus a half plus a half. If you do that for forever, even though a half is a small number, obviously it'll add up to infinity. So what does that mean? That means very concretely this series diverges by the nth term test. So it's a very good test to show that something diverges. Now on the other hand, just very quickly, let's say we had the sum n equals 1 to infinity of Oh, um, I don't know, uh, cosine uh, pi n over n, you know, something like that. Uh, kind of confusing looking series, but again, you take this guy, you treat that as a sub n. We take the limit as n goes to infinity uh, for that expression there. Um, I'm going to forego the algebra a little bit, but um, it's, it, it'll wind up going to, uh, to zero um, simply because. Um, cosine just alternates between plus or minus one, so it's more or less fixed, or at least on the um, at least bounded between minus one and one, while n grows, and so it gets bottom heavy. The denominator becomes so much larger than the numerator, uh, the fraction decreases to zero. So you say, okay, great. Does that mean it converges? Uh, unfortunately, not. Um, that means we have to uh, keep going. Uh, I'm not going to cover it in this video. Um, but uh, if you keep going, there's other tests that might be applicable in this situation where you can show that um, something converges or, or, uh, or diverges, and we, we can actually answer that definitively. So it's not applicable in every situation, but really not many of these tests are. It's a, a good test for certain situations. So anyways, hope that helped.